Uh, my first thoughts when I realised that Loki was going to have a series created for him were mostly surprise and <laughs> delight <laughs> because I, um, I quite recently had made that had filmed the scene in Avengers Infinity War um, and most people who've seen that film know what happens to Loki in that moment. So I thought, I thought this is wonderful, but uh, how are we going to do this? Because, because what happens, happens. Um, so yeah, I was, I was so excited and I was so thrilled. Um, I felt very honored that Marvel, uh, the, the producers at Marvel Studios have wanted to, to make a show about Loki. And then, and then really excited about where we would go. Um, uh, and they were very generous and inclusive in, in asking me what I thought I hadn't explored yet as the character. Because um, we covered quite a lot of ground in the Thor movies and in the Avengers movies, but there were still things uh, in you know, various bits of research I'd done over the years, which I thought, oh, we haven't done that. We could explore this. And, um, and they were they were gracious enough to include some of my ideas, but most of the best ones did not belong to me. <laughs> so in terms of the bits of Loki that you haven't seen before, um, what's interesting is that in this show, it's the Loki you know in a world you don't know. And he's stripped of all the things that are familiar. There's no Thor, there's no Odin, there's no Frigga, there's no Asgard, there's no... He doesn't even have his clothes or his magical powers. And so the question for me was, without those things, what remains? What makes Loki, Loki? And the TVA, this organization, this institution that governs the order of time, is extremely confronting for him. It sort of is a mirror for himself. And he's forced to to integrate some of the things perhaps he's always run from, some of the aspects of his life and his interior life, um, and driven towards a curiosity about finding out more. So yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but um, he's still the same guy. Charming, witty, um, charismatic, on the outside, broken, fragmented, and a bit isolated on the inside. But there's room for maneuver, and, and maybe there's a chance he can change. We'll see. Um, you know, as an actor, what I loved about playing Loki in this series was, was particularly taking the things that I feel we had built about the character over time and then putting him in new scenarios with new characters working with Owen Wilson and Gugu Mbata Raw and Wumi Masaku and Sofia De Martino and so many more. And I don't want to spoil who they are and who they're playing, but um, these new, fresh dynamics with all of the energy that these new actors bring um, and therefore kind of creating new connections and, and, and that in itself revealing stuff. Um, that's the most exciting aspect of it for me as an actor is working with other actors and, and seeing their brilliant ideas and how generous they are, um, particularly those, um, those, those actors I've mentioned. They were just great. And so they feel, that feels very fresh and very new, yeah. You know, one of the things I remembered about looking into Loki when I was starting out um, was, was, was trying to remind myself that Loki is the god of mischief. And mischief is as much a part of his identity as, as you know, Thor is the god of thunder. Um, and the way he swings that hammer and creates the lightning and the storm is a, is a huge part of who Thor is. So mischief seemed to me to be a kind of guiding influence on the tone. And if you look up mischief in the dictionary, uh, it says like, abstract noun, inclination to playfulness. I thought, okay, so everything just has to be, it can be quite profound, it can be dramatic, but keep the strain of playfulness in there. And I thought, um, yeah, it, the Loki series wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be Loki without a bit of mischief. So I think all the humor comes from that um, twinkly, cheeky, um, slightly disruptive 
um, strain of humour that I think is threaded through the series. So yeah, Mobius, Mobius is very confronting for Loki because Loki's someone who's used to being in control and he knows which, he knows the cards in his hand and how he's going to play them. And I think um, Mobius is uh, detached and Loki is a bit confused because his usual tricks and sort of powers of persuasion don't work on Mobius, who seemed kind of rather amused uh, by it. Um, and so Mobius and Loki develop a unlikely and possibly unstable um, game of, of, of trust, really, which is they both realize they need each other, um, but they're not sure if they can trust each other, which makes it very fun. Um, and Owen himself was just a, a complete delight. He was so playful and so, um, and so prepared and brought so many great ideas. And it was such a new, a new flavor yeah, for Loki, I think. I, I loved it. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Kate Heron. Uh, she, um, she joined the project about uh, seven or eight months before we started and, and the first time I met her I'll never forget because I think it was quite soon after she had pitched her vision for the series to the producers at Marvel and it was the most detailed and most passionate and most extraordinary vision I, I'd ever, I, could, I couldn't have, it was just amazing what she'd prepared. It was so passionate and she had done so much work already and had so many brilliant ideas um, because, and she was very respectful. She knows that the, the character of Loki means a lot to a lot of people and, and that these stories already have an established um, place in, in the audience's minds. And um, she was so respectful of that, but also brought so many brilliant new ideas um, to, to, to the table. She told me once, we, we went for a walk around Central Park in New York, and, and she said, the one thing I never stop doing, Tom, is, is I never stop working. And now that I'm at the other side of the experience, I can tell you that's absolutely true. She worked so hard and... Uh, so creatively, I, yeah, she was just brilliant. Um, really respectful, really kind, um, very, very generous. And I think what she's done with this series is, is exemplary. I think when Loki starts streaming on June 9th, viewers can look forward to um, seeing the Loki they know in a world they don't know. Um, and I think that's the most exciting aspect for me. Um, and I hope for them. <laughs> this guy is, it's the Loki from Avengers 1. He's, he's, his ego is a bit bruised, but he's still got some good ideas. He's witty, he's charming, he's charismatic, he's broken, he's isolated, he's fragmented, um, but there's still room for maneuver and there's still, um, there's still time, even though the series is kind of about time, but there's still time uh, for things to change. And I think that's the most exciting aspect. Loki goes, he's been on one journey through Ragnarok, um, Dark World, Ragnarok and Infinity War, and this is another journey. And I can't wait for audiences to see it. Hi there, here's today's daily fact. All the films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are split into bigger phases in which groups of films are linked to one another and in which characters make cameos in other movies. The first phase began with Iron Man, the second one with Iron Man 3, and the third one began with Captain America's Civil War. It is currently ongoing, although producer Kevin Feige said that this concept will probably change for future films. Remember to click below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.